All right, we're going to take a quick look at what happens when you raise a complex number to an exponent. The specific example we're going to look at here is we're going to take the complex number 1 plus root 3i, and we're going to take it to the fourth power. So first thing we'll do is actually plot the complex number to the first power before we um, do anything with it. And so what you notice is this complex number, you go over 1 and up root 3 along the imaginary axis. So that's what this would look like in the complex plane. If you find the length of this arrow using the Pythagorean theorem, it would be square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared, or in other words, it would be the square root of 1 plus 3, um, which would be the uh, square root of 4 or 2. So that vector is 2 units long. Um, and the other thing about this vector is the angle that you've cranked it up to from the x-axis. Um, if you've gone um, up root 3 units and only over 1, the angle here between the vector and the x-axis is going to be 60 degrees or pi over 3. Um, and so another way to write this complex number besides this so-called a plus bi form is you can write it as a magnitude, which is 2, times e to the i times whatever angle it's cranked to in the uh, xy plane. And so you can see multiplying, say, this, this number to the first power what it does is it has the action of, say, multiplying by 2 and rotating by 60 degrees off the axis. Okay, so let's square this thing. If you square it, well, it's pretty easy to square it if you look at the expression on the right. What you would do is square the 2, which would give you a 4, and then squaring e to the i pi over 3, it would just introduce another 2 into the exponent. Um, so you'll get this. Um, but what you notice is this has also, well, as we said above, it's multiplied by 2, and it's added another pi over 3 to the exponent. So what you'll see when you go to plot this thing is it's now 4 units long, and it's cranked another 60 degrees um, in the counterclockwise direction. And this pattern just continues. If you cube the thing, um, well, then that's just going to, again, multiply by 2 and crank by another pi over 3 radians. And so you're going to end up um, over here along the, um, say, negative x-axis, right? Because this was to the first power, second power, third power, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees gets you to 180. And so now we're pointed um, this way. Um, and then finally, the whole point of this was to take this to the fourth power. Um, so we just do it again. Multiply by 2, rotate by another um, 60 degrees. Um, and you see now the thing is 16 units long and at an angle of uh, f 4 pi over 3 or another 60 degrees here. Um, so this number here, 16 e to the i, 4 pi over 3, you could also have arrived at that instead of going through all these intermediate steps. Um, what you could have done is just taken this original expression here just to the fourth power. So it would be 2 to the fourth, and then the fourth power on this exponent would just introduce another factor of 4 into the exponent and you'd see you get the same exact expression. Um, so then what we want to do, if, if so this would be uh, a possible final answer for what um, 1 plus 3i to the 4th is, but if we want to take it back into the so-called a plus bi form, um, we can just use Euler's identity. So e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, and then by taking the cosine and sine of these angles, um, what you'll see is, well, the cosine of 4 pi over 3 is going to be um, minus 1 half. So this first term here, the real part, would be negative 8. Um, and you'll see the imaginary part here. This would give you root 3 over 2, taking the sine of this angle, um, or negative root um, 3 over 2, I should say. And so here is our a plus bi form of the, of the final answer. So you can see we go over 8 units. And we go down along the imaginary, um, negative imaginary axis, 8 root 3 units. Um, so that's one way to raise this thing to the fourth power. Um, again, you probably want to go skip right away to this, this method. Once you have an expression for the um, complex number um, to the first power, just raise this uh, magnitude to the fourth and then introduce another 4 into the exponent. Just to double check our work, let's take this thing to the fourth power by multiplying it out. You could use the so-called FOIL method several times. What we're going to do instead is use this uh, Pascal's triangle you know, trick. Um, so right here's a quadratic. This row is for quadratics. This is for cubics. And this is for taking things to the fourth power. Um, so let's just do this. You would get um, 1 times this first thing to the 
uh, fourth power, then this term to the zeroth power, so I didn't even include it, uh, plus four times this thing to the third power and this thing to the first. Um, then finally the middle coefficient six times this squared times this squared. Um, four, and then you can see the pattern. We're just kind of reducing the exponents here. Um, and by the time you kind of multiply these things out, um, what you see is this first term gives you a one. Um, this will give you a, a four root three i, because um, this is just the first power. i to the first power is just i, and root three to the first power. Um, this i squared gives you negative one, and this root three squared just gives you a three. So you basically get negative one times three times six, which gives you negative 18. Um, let's see, i cubed, that's gonna be minus i. Um, and then this is gonna give you three root three. So four times three root three is 12 root three times minus i. Um, and then this term would give you a, um, i to the fourth is just positive one. Um, and then root three to the fourth is nine. Um, and so you have this. Now you can see we've got what, one plus nine, but minus 18, that's gonna be um, negative eight. And then you have four root three minus 12 root three, so that's um, negative eight root three. So it double checks um, if, you, if you just multiply the, the thing out. Um, but once you get good at going to this, this form, um, here it's much, much faster to just find this expression as a magnitude and an angle, and then just raise this thing to the fourth power, um, kind of like we did here, and you can pretty quickly get to the um, get to the final um, answer.